right, I think the camera's working, so I'm going to start talking. Everybody, this is a video to talk about Lord Death's giant hand. It doesn't, probably, it doesn't fit all on the screen unless I put it all back here. It's really, really big, because his hand is really, really big. I mean, I've taken pictures now of all of the paper. I finally got it all cut out. Um, I'm going to start working on cutting out foam. I have the mask. Is, his mask is already um, completely cut out of foam. just needs to be glued together. And there's uh, several smaller pieces that I was able to cut out of work on the brakes. Um, but this update is specifically about the hand and the issues that I'm having with it because it is so big and it doesn't, it's not like other mechanical hands. Um, so what I've been finding in studying other mechanical hands is that a lot of them actually, let's do it this way so you can actually see this, it'll actually start, their fingers are always partially bent. That way when you pull on the, the tension to actually make it bend, it only has to just pull that closed. However, Lord Death's fingers, especially for the Reaper Chop, are always, like, completely straight. So that is something that I'm having a problem overcoming with having to pull the string, is that the tendons that I'm putting on the back, I have this elastic one right here, so it goes back just fine right now. I'll talk about that later. <coughs> also, please ignore my bird. Um, but then this finger has to overcome that. It's not fun. It's okay on the bottom one because I haven't actually added a tendon to that yet. But you can see it takes a lot of force, and it and as much as I'm moving this is fishing line, as much as I'm moving it, that's the entire length of like where it's got to go, and that's just one joint. Um, so it takes a lot of force just to get that to bend, and it's not even bending as far as I want. Um, so actually what I'm going to do is I think I'm actually going to drop this fishing line on the back altogether. I actually had all of them, I've already chopped them all off because I've decided I'm not going to use, oh no, I just chopped off one. No, no, they're all actually back there still. So in case the fingers fall forward like that, you can actually just pull the string and pull them back up. Um, this one, however, fell behind this joint. There we go. There we go. Some of them are fixed right now. I've, I've been modding it a lot. I've been doing a lot of testing with all the different fingers. Um, so as much force as it was on that, I could not use what I wanted to do, was which I wanted to have elastic on the back to pull it straight, and then this string on the front to basically pull it closed. Because number one, this distance that it's overcoming um, is too far for my hand to just close and actually get it closed just far enough for me to like it. And also because the tension on the elastic is just too great to actually get it back into a straight position and to overcome with pulling it from a straight position to a curved one. Um, so I'm really afraid of actually breaking the fishing line. <laughs> and this is, I actually, this is a pretty thick fishing line. It's pretty strong. Um, the fun foam I have added afterward, after doing a lot of testing with these, where I was just basically pulling on it to see what happened and where I needed the, the, the fun foam, I knew I needed something there to keep it from going down farther than 90 degrees. So I, that's what I added it. And then I also have fishing line in here because it will actually tear the fun foam. The fishing line will tear through the fun foam because of how much force it took to get this closed. It's cutting through the fun foam. Um, so that was another problem that I was having. Um, so. How I'm overcoming some of this is, like I said, I'm going to drop this entire back tendon. Why am I going to do that? Because a lot of the hands that I studied that have the, the curved fingers, like they're partially curved at all times, um, they didn't have something in the back to pull it straight back. They actually just had the natural, that was the natural sitting piece is where it wanted to sit slightly curved like that. That's where the hand wanted to sit when you let go of the pulleys. So I figured I have this foam, this is half inch foam. His fingers are big enough, they're thick enough that I actually have to use two layers of foam on the front, the front and the back, I think. Yeah, because it's four layers thick. I have the paper over there, and then you'll see it in the pictures how thick his fingers are because his hand is just so freaking big. Um, and that's another reason why I have to update and say I'm not making two hands as I originally proposed, but just one, because I want it to be able to tuck away underneath the cloak. And two hands is actually too big to fit underneath the cloak with me. So I can only fit one hand underneath the cloak with me, and then whenever I want to swing it out, I can, you know, um, and be like, hey. 
So there's that. That was pretty much all this was, is I wanted to talk about the fingers. Um, if you're curious about whatever I made all this out of, this is all foam board. All the black is all foam board, foam core. I love you too, fingers. They're very floppy. I had to, I wanted to make sure they had absolutely no tension on them whatsoever. Because we started out, um, some of the fingers were actually as tense as this is with that, with the elastic on there, where it actually takes a bit of force. And we had to go back um, because these, these are just cotter pins and fender washers. Um, but to actually bend the cotter pins because they're pretty thick, it actually tightened, obviously, as, as you close the cotter pins. And then that tightened around the foam board, and then it was just ended up being too tight. So we ended up putting more fender washers as shims inside here while we were tightening them. And then we actually went back and loosened some of them. And I've actually gone in there with some scissors and opened some of them up a little bit more because I'm not too worried about them, the cotter pins poking the foam. Um, so there's that. Um, I'm very excited because today, actually, right after I do this video, I'm going to start cutting out this foam. I'm very excited. As is the hand. Um, so this is my foam. This is insulation foam that I got at Joann's. I've never worked with it before, but um, it's not as thick as a lot of people, other people use in their cosplays that they need um, because I didn't want to have to carve it out. I'm basically, I'm just cutting out the shape because it's a square shape. It's not got anything rounded in it. I actually wanted to use square things. Um, and at the time, I didn't know I was going to probably need... I mean, they say this was half inch. I think it's an inch thick. But it, it's just, his hand is like this thick. Um, so it's going to be four, four of these, these things wide thick. So I could have gotten bigger ones, but I don't know how I would have cut through that. So this one's fine because I can cut through this, and then I can just put two layers of the same shape. And then I'm hoping that the density, this foam, with, with four of them on there, it's gonna be, it's gonna wanna go back to being straight, right? So as long as that works, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the, the fishing line on there for now as I create this sleeve for the hand, and I'll slip the, the foam, the insulation foam sleeve on top of it, and I will go ahead and I'll do a test run with just the foam on there, and I'll see how, how much tension there is on the fingers closing the fingers and if it will actually open it back up to the normal stasis that I want. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I'm very excited about the progress. I hope you keep um, up on the updates and stuff. I hope you guys like what I'm doing because I'm really excited about this character. And I have less than two weeks to finish him. Yay!